this air vent pretty much doesn't exist anymore. Today we're going to find out if 3D scanning, ranging from free through to a $20,000 version, can bring it back to life and complete a classic car restoration. Being a maker can be so satisfying because you're able to create things that are out of reach for everyone else. In this video, you're gonna see a great example of that. Using a range of 3D scanners and then resin 3D printing, we're gonna assist with a project that's been 40 years in the making. This is a 1970 Datsun Sports, the precursor to the Fairlady Z. It was purchased by my best friend's uncle in 1981, as pictured here. Here it is pictured in 1982, the year I was born on a road trip before its restoration started. The restoration includes things like new paint, but not just on the outer panels, we're talking a complete tear down of the body in order to achieve a perfect result. The restoration also includes mechanical parts, with the chassis stripped back, restored and powder coated. This restoration has been a labour of love and it's cost tens of thousands of dollars. Naturally, the interior has also received a lot of attention, with the dash going from sun damage and cracked to looking as good as the day it left the factory. One aspect that remains incomplete are these holes in the dash where the original vents have cracked and are no longer available. Believe me when I say that these vents are just not available. In fact, even beautifully restored examples of this car with perfect dashes are still missing the vent. For the owners of these cars, that must be incredibly frustrating. So luckily we've got this one to start work with. I don't know who sold their soul to get this, but a single undamaged version of the vent has been found, which we will refer to as the precious from now on. Those little fins aren't broken, in fact they're only meant to go part way across. And you might be able to 3D model this, but there is a gentle curve across the surface and lots of little details, particularly on the back. Hence why 3D scanning might be a solution. My aim is to 3D scan the part and then 3D print a replacement. The 3D printing part I expect to be easy, and I'm going to resin print on my Frozen Sonic Mini 4K, because like most resin printers, it will have no trouble getting the required detail. The 3D scanning will be tricky and we have four options. The first is photogrammetry, which is completely free. The second and third, the Riverpoint Pop Scanner and the Creality CRT I've covered on the channel before. And finally, we're going to try a professional grade Einscan HX to see how that stacks up versus the other options. For each, my philosophy is the same. I'm going to put in around 80% effort in optimizing the 3D scan, which should yield an indicative initial result then we'll pick the best and go all out if necessary to get it as good as possible. The aim is simply to invest enough time to make an informed decision on how to proceed. One tool I have invested in is some 3D scanning spray. Since 3D scanning uses light, what happens when we have a less than optimal surface, such as this transparent glass? In this case, the 3D scanner picks up the surface underneath and the scan is problematic. The spray will go onto the surface of the object leaving a matte and uniform finish for 3D scanning and then dissolve off without any scrubbing after a few hours. To protect the precious, I first tested it on this gauge and found that it was pretty easy to spray on and after about 15 minutes was dry enough to handle, although little bits of residue were still left on your fingers. The uniform and matte surface definitely helped with the 3D scanning accuracy and it did dissolve off by itself, but it took more like days rather than the advertised four hours. This gave me the confidence to use the spray on the vent, so you'll see the before and after results with and without the spray where applicable. We're all set, but before we start, I'd like to point out that this part is particularly small and fiddly, and not all of these options will be suitable. We're gonna start with the free one, which is photogrammetry. Photogrammetry works by taking a series of images of an object from all different angles. The great thing about it is you can use pretty much any camera that you have access to, including your phone. The photos are then imported and processed by free software, which magically works out where the camera was positioned for each individual photo and is able to build up a 3D mesh of the object. To learn this process, I followed an excellent video tutorial from Prusa using the free software Meshroom. It takes you through how the interface works and a typical workflow, and this suited my object quite well. What I would say about this software is it looks quite complicated and there's quite a lot of settings, However, there's not that much you need to learn to do some basic 3D scanning. As for the final result, well, it wasn't too bad from the top, but the underside, despite capturing a lot of data points, is lacking detail around the little fins in particular. 
All things considered, it's quite impressive considering it was free, and we know from the Prusa tutorial you can get pretty good results with less tricky shapes, so I'd absolutely recommend having a play. I could take more photos with my actual camera, but remember my 80% rule, so we move on to option 2. Next up is the Revo Point Pop 3D Scanner that I covered in a previous video. When I made that video, they were mid Kickstarter campaign, but now the product is available for around 700 US dollars. There's also a new Pop 2 scanner available that's meant to offer higher detail. This scanner uses cameras and infrared light, we move it slowly and steadily around the object, and a 3D mesh will be generated in real time, although when working outdoors, natural sunlight can interfere quite a bit. However, if you wait until light is low outdoors or use it indoors, the performance improves a lot and you can get some quite impressive results, particularly on larger objects. This car vent, however, is not a large object and this scanner really struggled with it. Even after applying the 3D scanning spray and filling a lot with the gain in exposure settings, there just wasn't enough suitable geometry to maintain proper tracking. After finishing the scan and processing with the supplied software, it's safe to say the result was underwhelming. This scanner is just not suited to this type of object, but for something larger like a face, I've previously gotten excellent results. The next option is the Creality CRT, which I've also previously made a video about. It retails for 900 US dollars, although it's currently sold out. They now have a CR scan version instead, but that appears to be more like the pop scanner in how it works. The CRT is a structured light scanner. We calibrate it by letting it view a checkerboard calibration plate, and then we replace this with our object, which is rotated automatically on a Bluetooth turntable before black and white patterns are projected onto the surface, and the camera measures their deformation and uses this to build up the 3D surface. I previously found this scanner to be quite accurate and detailed, and on paper at least, it should be the most suitable scanner that we've tested thus far. My first scan of the Precious used the most detailed setting set up in the standard orientation. As you can see, like with the pop scanner, I worked in the dark indoors to control the light. Some of the surfaces were quite accurate, but the scan suffered from a weird blob transition between the turntable and the vent. I experimented with positioning quite a bit for this scanner, using Bluetack to hold the vent up on each end, and I also scanned with and without the 3D scanning spray. In this orientation without the scanning spray, the external frame at least was quite clean, but the little fingers going across the vent were sadly absent. The scanning spray actually made a significant difference here, helping the scanner pick up the small details, and I'd say this scan is actually quite impressive. If this is the worst case scenario, then the end result is going to be quite reasonable. Not bad for a hobby product, but how does it compare to a professional grade 3D scanner? This is Miles, and you might remember him from an earlier video where he explained how he built a business making automotive parts with 3D printing as a basis. Miles' success has continued to the point where he's had to expand his business, moving to a larger premises with many more 3D printers. He's also invested in a professional grade 3D scanner and was kind enough to give up hours of his time to assist with this project. The scanner in question is an Einscan HX which is a hybrid scanner offering blue laser scanning as well as structured light. Like the pop scanner, it's handheld and you move around your object in real time building up the mesh. On laser scan mode, it offers 0.04mm precision and although it might be suited to larger objects, it's very capable with small ones too. They don't list the price on the website, but this model is worth around 20,000 Australian dollars, which equates to 14,000 US. Miles set up the vent on a table where he has tracking dots in place for this exact task. The scanning was completed in laser mode and without any scanning spray. Like some of the others, the scanner is handheld, but the refresh rate, tracking of the object and detail is next level. After the vent was flipped, I got some footage of the first few seconds of scanning and you can see exactly how quick the geometry is built up. Miles then took the individual scans and used the table markers to do a plane cut and remove unwanted geometry. Following this, the top and bottom scans were aligned by placing manual markers on matching geometry. And after a couple of attempts, the two point clouds were aligned very nicely. The point clouds were then converted to a watertight mesh before a smoothing operation was used to tidy up the geometry. As is, this mesh was already the best result from the various scanning options. We have a decent result, so let's print it. The raw geometry from Miles was sliced in Chitu box, 
using automatic support from the platform and the part rotated to make sure all of the support would be on the underside where it wouldn't be seen in the final model. Each vent was printed on the frozen Sonic Mini 4K which I've previously reviewed and took somewhere around 8 hours. After washing and drying the vent but before post curing, I got to work removing all of the support material, using side cutters to remove any chance of breaking the delicate parts, until the part was free. As planned, all of the imperfections from the support material are on the underside and they just won't be visible from inside the car. From the top side, the vent is looking just like the original. It also seems to be a perfect match in terms of its size and scaling. Even if nothing improves from here, this is a great result. What we've got here is viable, but now it's time to improve it with that last 20% of effort. Our initial result is already quite good, but we can go one better because the Einscan HX comes with a reverse engineering software bundle, and that includes Geomagic Essentials, which will analyze a mesh and convert it into editable solid geometry. So Miles was able to produce a step file that we can edit and build on in CAD. I was able to make a series of shapes to be used in Boolean operations to clean up the edges and fix where the clips attached to the dash. Finally, I exported as a mesh and used Mesh Mixer to smooth out any surfaces that needed it and I have an old video explaining this if you're interested. And here is the final result. From the top, hopefully you agree, it's pretty close to perfect. On the underside, it is a little bumpier, but you'll never see this, and importantly, I've restored the sharp edges needed to clip into the dash. The final vent was sliced in exactly the same way, apart from using medium instead of heavy support. I also prepared a mirrored version for the opposite side of the dash, and both of these were printed on the Sonic Mini 4K with the same settings as before. The printed parts were washed then dried, and this time the dainty and medium support structure was able to be pulled off entirely by hand. And this was the moment of triumph where the part was complete, nice and smooth on top, and some proper mounting surfaces underneath. Using modern technology, the unobtainable has been recreated. Just a reminder that this part is smaller than optimal for Miles' scanner, but even so, it gave us the best result. Miles did share a few other projects with this scanner and they are quite impressive. Let's start with this quick scan of the back of the engine and crankshaft, and then a second scan of a gearbox bell housing aligned with the engine, and the combination of these allowing a gearbox adapter to be made for an engine conversion. And then we have this scan of a car's complete dashboard, with the aim of getting enough detail behind the instrument cluster, to design a 3D printed adapter that an electronic aftermarket instrument panel can be bolted to. You can see just how valuable this scanner is for Miles' business considering he makes auto parts. And we're grateful that he was generous with his time and assisted us with a project that's even older than me. I'm pleased and hopefully the owner of the car will be too. Next up will be a test fit before any alterations required are made and then it can be painted to match the dash and inserted for real. Let me know what you think of it in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D scanning and 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.